Hi everyone. Welcome to another lunchtime with live animals. I'm Spider. I'm sorry. I'm Forrest Urban. You can call me Spider Urban if you want. That'd be great. And here with them back behind the scenes in our insectary. They're scary. We think spiders are awesome. But I have a whole bunch of things from our spider pavilion today and other things to show you for our spider philia special. The first thing I'd like to show you are some of our orb weavers. And right, orb weavers are a phenomenon of nature, right? Special spiders called orb weavers produce orb webs and they can be huge. Some of them can be three to five meters wide. And the spider silk is one of the strongest naturally occurring things that we've ever discovered. And so how does the spider produce an orb web? It's really phenomenal and still kind of a mystery how they do this because most orb weavers are, are what we would call legally blind. They can't see very well at all. They have little bitty eyes called simple eyes. And they usually have about six of them, six to eight, but they can't see. That's not their main form of sensory perception. And they're able to make these big ornate webs that are symmetrical and um, have a specific pattern. How do they do this? It's, it's amazing because they're not taught how to do it. It's just genetically programmed into their circuitry to how to be able to do this but we can try to understand it a little bit. So let's look at a basic web, right? So this is kind of a basic uh, orb web step how to. Um, first thing that a spider will do, will crawl up onto like a, a twig or, or a tree and let out a filament of silk, just one filament of silk. That is called, it's called, uh, ballooning, but they'll lay out one thin piece, which gets caught by the currents, by the wind, and taken to some other location. Once it lands on another tree or a twig, the spider will then pull it tight to create tension. Then they'll walk along that piece and let out another piece and walk back to the middle and then hang down to create the, the first little base, the first little Y section. From there, <clears throat> They're gonna drag silk around and cement it around to different locations to create to create the frame, the main structure. And then they'll go in and create spokes off the main frame in an internal catching spiral, all the while producing different types of silk that have different strengths, different colors. Uh, it's just really amazing. And they don't go out and buy the silk, right? They actually weave it themselves inside their bodies. This is another basic uh, picture of what's going on, right? We have uh, this capturing spiral. We have radiuses coming off. And every spider produces a very specific, species-specific uh, type of web. But they are producing uh, the silk inside their bodies. They pull it out through spinnerets that are at their abdomen. Spinnerets are like, they're like spigots on a hose. It's an electron uh, microscope enlargement of what it, some spinnerets look like. But inside their bodies, they have these silk glands. They have about seven silk glands. Each silk gland can produce uh, a different, very specific type of silk. So one type will be for egg production. Another type will be for web production. Some types will be for... Uh, the cemented portion, it's really amazing. Now the golden silk spider that we have in the pavilion is the largest species and they produce the biggest webs and their webs are golden. They're really, really beautiful. And it's been estimated that they are five times the tensile strength of steel, just incredibly, incredibly strong and elastic at the same time that means that that things can fly through the webs and it doesn't just rip up the web they get stuck in it so it has the ability to stretch really really far what's interesting with these 
spiders and really with all spiders is that the females are so much bigger than the males. The males are very, very small because the males don't have all of that silk producing uh, factory inside their bodies. They don't make their own webs. They live in the webs of the females and then eat their food, try to like Bogart on their food. Uh, and so they don't live as long either. And they're not quite as big, but these, these uh, orb weavers can catch some amazing things. And so, right, an orb web is invisible for the most part by design because they're not trying to, uh, they're trying to catch things as they fly by and they don't want to be seen. And so spiders or snakes will get caught in their webs as they're crawling up a, a, a building or a tree or whatever. Birds will fly in and get stuck and bats as well. <clears throat> Now they can't see very well, but they can detect vibration very, very well. And so when something flies into their web, they can detect what it is by the vibration that it gives off. So they're masters at vibration detection. Now it doesn't necessarily mean it wants to eat this, this bat or this snake or this bird that flew in. Okay, and so oftentimes they'll cut it out of the web because the, they don't want the web to get too damaged. So they'll cut it out of the web, especially if, say, a person were to walk into the web. Uh, they don't want to have anything to do with us, right? We are like gigantic uh, monsters to them. So they're not after us. We're not their prey. They don't want to waste their venom on, venom on us, anything of the sort. Now, another really cool thing that some spiders do with their webs is they create web decorations. And now we call them decorations. Does a spider call them decorations? Probably not but they'll do an extra zigzag of really thick silk through the web. Um, and we don't know exactly why they do this, but we know that those that do produce the zigzag catch more prey, even though it, it makes the web more visible, they're still catching more. They don't have to do the zigzag though, because it takes a lot of silk and a lot of energy to make it. So sometimes they won't, they won't do the zigzag. But you can find these in California. The golden or the garden spider on the left is really common in California. And the one on the right, you can find uh, in cactus around the, around the coast, especially. That's the silverback archaeology. Another one of my favorites are the spiny back cord weavers. These are little guys, but they make huge webs. They have spikes coming off their bodies. Uh, and those spikes protect them from birds, but they can come in all of these different color combinations. They can even be uh, bright red and uh, vibrant blue. And so they are super cool. They are um, from Florida and Texas and those types of areas. The orchard spiders are super amazing. It's this delicate day glow green and orange spider that produces a horizontal web. Most webs are vertical for catching things that are flying. Theirs are horizontal and so they catch things that are crawling up from, from the grass, from the forest floor, going uh, upwards. Super beautiful. We'll look at a lot of these when we get to our creature cam. Now, part of a spider life cycle, you may already know, is molting, right? When a spider needs to regenerate a limb or increase in size, it, they'll grow their exoskeleton, right? We have our skeleton, our endoskeleton, if you will, on the inside of our bodies. Their exoskeleton is on the outside of their body. And so when it's time to, to grow, they will, underneath their old exoskeleton, they'll grow a new one and then pull themselves, crack open the old one, pull themselves out. This is a tarantula upside down, pulling all eight legs and fangs out from its old exoskeleton. You can see it's, it's, it's doing this in a cradle of silk. And so that's another way that they use their silk is to help them with molting. This is a really cool one that we have in the trench in the pavilion as well called the pink toe tarantula, which I think are super cute. They are an arboreal species that lives in trees, not underground, but they start out life as a tiny spiderling with pink legs and black toes. As they molt and grow, that color flips to pink toes and black legs. Super cool. Now, green links is a is a fun one because they have really good eyesight. And when you have good eyesight, <clears throat> you're not as good as building webs and you don't need a web because you have the ability to, to stalk and run prey down. 
And so this is a green lynx uh, eating a cricket that it caught uh, as it was living on a plant. Another one that has really good eyesight, you may know as well, are the jumping spiders, right? Jumping spiders are so fun, so hilarious. They have these huge eyes. They'll kind of cock their head and look at you. If you have one that jumps into your kitchen or your bathroom, they'll you know help you with biting flies and mosquitoes and all those things. It's great to have a jumping spider around, it's super cute. And so their eyes are it looks like they have like telescopes in there and they kind of do because they have a lens that, that slides back and forth inside their eyes. They can see lots of details. They have eyes all the way around their head, including the top, so they can see all directions at once. They are hilarious. Now, the peacock jumping spider, you probably know, uh, is one that has um, become a superstar because they do a lot of dance dancing, especially the males are these bright colors like a peacock their iridescent blue and green and red and they strut around and dance around just like a peacock a male peacock does when they're trying to impress the ladies and so when they were discovered a guy was like look at this little teeny tiny spider like drumming and humming and waving its arms up and down right in front of this gigantic female and that's uh, their courting ritual, their courting behavior. Super fun to watch, and you should watch one of those videos. Now, the wolf spiders are fun as well. They're one of our favorites because they also can see really well. They have massive eyes. They're called wolf spiders because they stalk down prey. This is one that stalked some cupcakes, and uh, you can find them when you're camping or if you have a yard or out in your garage, if you go out at night with a flashlight, you should hold it right in front of your eyes and watch the diamonds that shine back at you. Those are all a uh, wolf spider eye shine. It's just like a deer in headlights type of thing that's happening. You can see all their cute little eyes there. And the wolf spider mothers are amazing because they actually protect their egg sacs and they're young. So they'll take their eggs, wrap it in silk, take that egg sac and then strap it onto their bodies, run around, uh, stalk prey, and then all the spiderlings come out of the egg sac and latch on to her as she continues to run around and catch food. It's so fun to have one of those as a pet. Of course, people always ask, why do we have spiders? What are they good for? Well, they're an important part of the food chain, right? That means that almost every life stage, uh, other animals eat them but they eat so many biting flies and mosquitoes and other bugs that we consider pests that it's absolutely critical that we have spiders or else the world would be uninhabitable for us. It would be a miserable place. Mosquitoes would be everywhere. So we, we have to appreciate and love our spiders. Um, let's look at our creature cam now. Switch the camera here. Look at some of our amazing, our amazing uh, orb weavers. All right, first one up is the orchard spider. This is a little guy. You can see it's bright green and orange body. It kind of looks like a widow, like a like a black or brown widow, but it's not. These guys are from Florida and Texas, as well. These are the ones that make the horizontal webs. And we also have a green lynx mom here with her babies. Let's look at the, look at the babies first. These are all of her little spiderlings. Green lynx, as my partner Leslie Gordon was, was telling me, are amazing mothers. She had an experience with one uh, where the mother egg sac had gotten to serve. And um, the mother came out and protected the egg sac and actually hoisted it up and uh, moved its location to protect it. Sorry, my phone's going off. So let's look at some of our orb weavers here. This is the silver guy. It looks like it's just sitting here sus uh, suspended in the air, right? It's actually in its web, which we can't really see. You can see a little bit of it, but it's it's meant to be uh, invisible. 
And we can flip it around and see its bright silver backside that is its namesake, Silver Agaiagri. Alright. Go over here. Let's look at this egg sack here of one of our, our Nephila spiders. This is their characteristic egg sack. Inside this egg sack of silk, there will be about 500 eggs. Now, all those eggs won't make it. There's so many things that eat spider eggs uh, and lots of parasites like wasps and things. So they, they have a really high reproductive number because very few of them will actually become adult spiders. So this is our golden silk spider, Nephila clebepes, the largest species. You can see it looks like uh, she has kind of a skeletor looking cephalothorax. That's the head portion there. Can you see that? And leg warmers on her legs. So this is the species that has the really extra, extra, extra strong silk. All right, let's look at some of our tarantulas now. We have here a molt of our tarantula named Wednesday. She needed to grow a little bit bigger, so she molted. This is her backside, and you can rub her belly a little bit. She's so soft, just incredibly soft. But it's bright red here. That's a warning sign. So a tarantula will rear up on her back legs and show her fangs in her bright red belly as a warning sign, you know, back off or might regret it. This is where she pulled all of her eight legs out here. And so this is what's left over. This is just her, her shell, her molt. All right, now we're going to look at a special one called Chia. This is our green bottle blue. This is going to help me there, our animal care specialist. Creeping into Chia's house here. Hang on a second. Just to see if we can focus first. So she's a green bottle blue. She has incredible coloration. There she is there. Iridescent uh, metallic looking hair on her body. Now, even though tarantulas normally can't see very well, it's thought that other green bottle blues can detect each other by this uh, by this coloration. You can see all of her silk, all that white stuff, that's all of her silk she has down here in her, her layer of luxury. All right, Crystal's going to drop in the, the roach that we're giving her. She's, she's keen on it. She got it so fast. So she's going to envenomate, envenomate the roach, which will subdue her. The roach will, um, it's an insecticide paralytic, fall asleep and use some digestive enzymes as well to turn her into a liquid. So tarantulas don't eat solids. They're on a liquid diet. And then she has what's called a sucking stomach that will pull all of that goodness back into her body. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Crystal. All right, let's make it turn my camera back around here. And... Ah, there we are. Well, that's it for today. <clears throat> I had so much fun sharing our spiderophilia with everyone. Be sure to uh, follow us on Instagram. Send us any of your questions. As always, stay curious, everyone, and happy Halloween. Thank you. Bye-bye.